Rising rat numbers follow the floods. There are water rats, and they are big, and they will invade. Recognition at last for the bravery of police dogs. AFC Totten on the comeback trail. And finally, another award for winner. We do the hard work so you don't have to. Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Zina Alabadi. An 82-year-old man has been charged with the murder of two women in Farnham. The bodies of the women and four dogs were found with gunshot wounds at a dog breeding farm on Sunday morning. Our chief reporter, Alex Delaney, was at the scene. In this home of Crooksby Road near Farnham, Surrey residents Christine and Lucy Lee were found dead, along with the bodies of four puppies. Police arrested an 82-year-old dog breeder who has now been identified as John Lowe of Tilford in Farnham. Police were called around 10am on Sunday morning following reports that gunshots had been heard at the property. The bodies of a 66-year-old woman and a 40-year-old woman were found along with the corpses of four puppies. Police say all of the dead appear to have suffered gunshot wounds and a firearm was later found at the scene. The officer leading the investigation said, it is extremely sad that two people have lost their lives and police liaison officers are working hard to support their relatives and friends at this very difficult time. Mr Lowe has now been charged with two counts of murder and possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. He is due to appear at Guildford Crown Court later. Alex Delaney, Winchester News Online, Farnham. The Attorney General may review a four-year sentence given to a man who killed another man with a single punch. Some of you may find the CCTV footage of the incident disturbing. Andrew Young, wearing the blue anorak, got into an argument with a cyclist outside a Tesco Express store in Charminster Road, Bournemouth, last year. Mr Young, who suffered from Asperger's syndrome, was then approached by Lewis Gill of Sutton, South London. Gill then punched Mr Young, who fell backwards into the road. Mr Young was taken to hospital but died the next day. A 24-year-old Somerset man has been convicted of offences including dangerous driving and assault. Matthew Palsland, appearing at Winchester Crown Court, was sentenced to 18 months in jail, suspended for two years. Bracken Stockley reports. And what the judge describes as an extremely frightening incident in August 2012, Palsland petrified one ex-partner by driving within inches of her following a dispute over their young daughter. The court heard that Powersland was discharged from the army in March 2013 on medical grounds following post-traumatic stress. Judge Jay Miller said that it was with hesitation that she granted him a two-year suspended sentence. Bracken Stockley, Winchester News Online, Winchester Crown Court. Winchester businesses are to receive a £40,000 of government funding to help with the clean-up after the floods. Business and finance reporter John Wilson has this. The City Mill, normally awash with visitors now, but flooded in a very different way, the museum is still shut. Water levels must drop before a survey can be carried out to assess the damage. But the floods aren't just wearing buildings down. Yeah, it's just draining really. A month of it's a bit too long. Uh, you know, a few days isn't too bad, but ha had enough really. I think we've probably borne the brunt of it, um, mainly because the river um, sort of bottlenecked here. So, so yeah, um, we get everything washing down that goes in the river upstream. Barriers to the economic recovery may be broken down with the government scrapping business rates for three months for those affected. Winchester City Council says £50,000 is available to help through its hardship scheme. Companies can also apply for up to £5,000 to help with ways to handle future floods. One local business figure, who praised the local authorities' reaction, addressed what small independents want. I think they do recognise that there's no way they'll get the hard cash to re replace the lost trade, because that's impossible. But, you know, we've got businesses whose sellers are, you know, a foot deep in water. Um, they, need, they need cash. Telltale signs of flooding are still very much visible here behind the mill. 
The clean-up operation is ongoing and at least one restaurant remains closed. Local businesses will hope that more money expected from the government in March flows into the city. John Wilson, Winchester News Online, Winchester. The floods may be receding, but now Winchester is facing a new problem, a rising population of rats. Council pest controllers have received dozens of extra calls since the beginning of the year. Tate Slyfield reports. Many people's worst nightmare. And now some fear that there will be many more in Winchester because of the floods, according to city councillors. The Lib Dems have lashed out at the Tories as they want an increase in pest control fees. But the Tories are against this. That we are getting more uh, buildings, we are disturbing habitat. We are moving um, the natural environment for rodents and they are on the move. Pest Control Hampshire said that during a six week period this year, there were 74 call ups regarding a major upsurge in rat activity. But the rats can't sustain their habitats due to the recent floods. But the council will look at this issue further in the coming weeks. Tate Slyfield, Coming up, why honeybees are fighting their own species, the latest news from sport, and Team Winnell's success for journalism innovation. We do the hard work so you don't have to. Police dogs in Hampshire will now receive the same honours as police officers when they join or retire from the force. They will even receive a certificate of service. Officers say the change highlights the importance of police dogs. Crime reporter Tom Wright has this report. Police officer with a dog, this is your last warning. Come out and show yourself now or I will send the dog. Roxy is six years old and her partner says she is a vital member of the police family. This is why. Roxy catches suspects that police officers can't. And this is what happens if you don't listen to her. Dogs like Roxy and her colleague Kane will be given the same honours as their two-legged partners and receive a certificate of service when they retire. The police says the recognition is deserved. The changes highlight the importance that's placed on police dogs uh, and their support within the extended police family. As such, we're delighted they now receive the recognition they deserve. The police says this is just a small step to demonstrate dogs are part of their family. Tom Wright, Winchester News Online. Researchers are all abuzz with the discovery that bumblebees are being hit with diseases that are more commonly found in honeybees. Our environment correspondent, Laura Allen, has more details. Bees across the UK have been found with the deformed wing virus and a fungal parasite. Many species have experienced a decline in recent years and have even become extinct. The key to stop the transmission, according to scientists, is for beekeepers to prevent the disease spreading in honeybee hives. In the, say at this time of year, um, you can dose with um, an additive in some syrup and then move them as soon as you can onto uh, fresh combs because the, uh, the various uh, pathogens uh, reside in the old combs. So it's a matter of hygiene and good uh, housekeeping rather than any uh, uh, treatment with anything. Although many of these honeybees are asleep for the winter, experts will continue to monitor them ready for pollination season in the spring. Laura Allen, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Winchester Student Union celebrated winning the Best Bar None Award last night. Members of the community joined together to promote the achievement and boost local businesses' responsibility. The Student Union has teamed up with the Winchester bid to raise awareness for the scheme. Megan Fisher reports. Local pub and club owners came together at the launch of a partnership last night. Winchester Bid and the Student Union are working towards a safer community. The Student Union has been awarded the Best Bar Nun Prize for responsible bar ownership for the second year running. I think the Best Bar Nuns are really sort of 
good community style of things. I think the year when we got we achieved a gold status and we were one of the top eight or nine unions in the country. It's a phenomenal thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic achievement for us as an organisation and also the individuals involved in it personally and professionally. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a really good idea because anything that encourages pubs and bars and clubs and that to be more responsible about how they treat their customers and not overdoing the alcohol and just generally providing a nicer night out, that must be a good thing. So we've got quite a lot of support from different agencies, which is great for the community that everybody wants to be involved in it. Uh, honestly, both delighted and quite surprised. Obviously, it's quite an achievement for any uh, establishment to win it, let alone win it twice. I mean, obviously, we're also waiting eagerly for the results for this year and see how high uh, we've managed to achieve this year. But yeah, uh, really, really excited that Winchester Student Union's won Best Man on again. This year's awards will be held in September. Megan Fisher, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Now, the Euro elections are coming up in May and the South will play a key role. Our political analyst, Lucy Britt, has been looking at where the parties stand and how students might affect the results. The election results for Winchester 2010 show the Tories holding huge percentages at 49% and the Lib Dems also stand their ground with 43%, clearly showing Winchester as a Tory Lib Dem stronghold. Labour appear much further down, pretty much nowhere, with a measly 6%. Now, it's commonly thought that students remain fairly apathetic when it comes to voting. However, the Winner 100 poll, taken in 2013, around the time of the Eastleigh by-elections, tells us a different story. Labour stormed ahead with 36% of the votes, a stark contrast to the results taken from the wider population of Winchester in 2010. The Tories at 29% and Lib Dems at 24% lagged behind in student popularity. UKIP holds substantially more favour with the students at a 10% compared to 2% of Winchester residents polled in 2010. The Winchester 60 poll tracks voting intentions of the university students. Results taken from the 12th of February show the Lib Dems on the back front. In the past they have had a strong student following, but this is significantly weakened since the last general election, possibly due to the student fee fiasco. While the Tories are well ahead of the Lib Dems on campus, the bad news for sitting Conservative MP Steve Bryan is that UKIP have come from a very low base to a 10% share. A strong showing for UKIP in May would be very unwelcome for the Conservatives. Labour, meanwhile, hold a 45% majority. If repeated across Winchester and the country, it would result in a landslide victory. Last week saw a rise in popularity of other parties by 12%. This may well worry the main players who need to win over this generation of voters. While Labour appear to be less popular this week, they still hold the majority of votes at 37%. The Tories are also down in comparison, however this way will not be a surprise due to the flood crisis and the subsequent blame game. However, David Cameron could be seen to be relying on the apparent economic upturn, with still plenty of time to erode Labour's lead before the election next year. Now over to our sports desk with Drew Richardson. Thanks, Zena. AFC Totten took on St Neots Town at the Testwood Stadium on Saturday. The Stags were looking to end a run of five straight defeats, a tough ask against a side who have won their last three games in a row. Joe Rutterford has the action. The last time these two sides faced each other, St Neots came away with a 6-0 win and it looked to start in the same way when Jake Woolley gave the away side an early lead, cutting in from the right-hand side and releasing a ferocious shot. Totten responded well and were awarded a penalty when Harrison Jilks ran at the heart of the St Neots defence and was subsequently brought down by Ben Farrell. The Bournemouth Loney then stepped up to take it, driving the spot kick into the top left corner. Minutes later, Lewis Hillard's deflected shot fell to Simon Thomas, who was able to simply pass the ball across goal to Shane Tolley for an easy tapping. Totten's hard work was undone by some slack defending, leaving Tolly completely unmarked at the back post. But Totten fought well and found their equaliser shortly before half time. Zach Mooland reacted the quickest and was left with a tap in to score a sixth goal of the season. The second half did not live up to the expectations left from the first. Totten's left-back Drew Bridge came closest to scoring without really troubling keeper Nathan Abbey. Lewis Hillard's late effort summed up a frustrating day for St Neots as the game finished 
Joe Rutherford, Winchester News Online. Eastleigh were hoping to get their promotion push back on track when they faced Maidenhead United last night. With both teams fighting at opposite ends of the table, a win could prove crucial come the end of the season. Callum Warren Piper was at the Silver Lake Stadium. Eastleigh FC went under pressure early on in the first half with a quick fire goal from Maidenhead's Reese Tyson Nassaris. The Spitfires clawed their way back to 1 0 through Reese Connolly. But Maidenhead took a 2 1 lead into the second half after Matt Ruby's stoppage time header. Eastleigh came out fighting in the second half, levelling through Stuart Fleetwood, who returned from a suspension. Maidenhead came close to a corner, but were denied on the line. And it was a 90th minute goal through Ben Strevens that secured the Spitfires the win. Callum Warren Piper, Winchester News Online. Over 600 people set out for the 10k road run in Winchester at the weekend, despite fears during the week that the event may be called off due to bad weather. Ravina Gatora has more. Swarms of runners gathered in Winchester for the 32nd annual 10k road run, but this year has seen a record low turnout due to recent flooding, with fears that it wouldn't even take place at all. We're really happy considering the weather. I mean, uh, it stopped a lot of people running for the last month or so. The numbers dropped, but they're on their way back up again. Now. So we had about, we had about six or 700 today. So we're quite pleased, all things considered. Some of the runners were running for charities, whilst others used the race to train for longer distances. Um, well, I'm training for a half marathon, which is in two weeks. So it's a bit of a shame it's been so wet because I've been doing most of my training in the gym on the treadmill. But hopefully now I've got some dry weather, they'll be out on the road again, which is good. I finished in 40 minutes, so pretty much dead on, which is probably, I think, my, my best I've ever done. So pretty chuffed with that, yeah. Sponsors were hoping to raise some money. However, like the weather and entry numbers, it was a disappointing turnout. If I'm honest, I had no idea what to expect. We've never been involved with anything like this before. I think we would have hoped to raise some money, and we have raised very, very little. But we've been seen. That's valuable to us. Even though the event was nearly called off, organisers battled on against the weather and are hoping for a bigger and better turnout next year. Ravina Gatora, Winchester News Online, Winchester. That's all from sports this week. Back to Zena in the studio. Thanks, Drew. And finally, some of our own news. Winnell has won another prestigious award, this time for our innovative approach to the news. Lucy Wilson has this. So it's a pleasure to say um, that the judges' uh, prize goes to um, Winchester. Winchester Journalism came away with the Judges' Prize at the Times and Sunday Times Build the News competition after developing a simple article editor for journalists. We do the hard work so you don't have to. The Times News developer was impressed by their idea. Saying that your project involves using Markdown to create page structure, I think that's just great because uh, really the thing that's always difficult when producing these things, and especially if in like a newsroom context, is you can spend a dozen hours coding something, but you might not actually have the content in the various you know, image and video assets. Winchester competed against 10 other universities, but were recognised for how they built the news. Lucy Wilson, Winchester News Online. That's all for this week, but for more award-winning news, sports and features, log on to winall.co.uk. Goodbye.